see all of you in the house of God. It is a privilege you too, Pastor. and the freedom to worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, it's not because what we have done. It is because of who he is. He's such an awesome God. Rodney, nice to see you. Praise the Lord. And each and every one of you. Good to see all of you. Praise the Lord. We welcome you in the name of the Lord. Today, we just wanted to meditate upon the Word of God from Psalms. If you can turn your Bible to Psalm 64 or 63. Let's turn to 63 and look at verse 4. Let me read from verse 1 onwards and all the way to verse 4. O oh God, you are my God. Earnestly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My body longs for you. In a dry and weary land where there is no water. I have seen you in the sanctuary and beheld your power and your glory because your love is better than life. My lips will glorify you. I will praise you as long as I live and in your name I lift my hands up. In your name I will lift up my hands. Amen. Amen. Would you all raise your hand? Amen. This is biblical. Do you know? Praise the Lord. This is a privilege. Amen. Think about it. Why people raise their hands? How did it all start? It? Do you know? Anybody know? How many of you have seen the president take an oath, right? Yes. Yeah. And what did they do? They raised their hand. They raised their hand. Yeah. Right? Yes. They raised their hand. All the presidents so far, when they have taken the oath, what did they do? Yeah, I have not seen one president saying, "What? Well, I'm not going to raise my hand." <laughs> Praise the Lord. So raising the hand, even today, we are whether it is in government or in church or everywhere, that people raise their hands. Raising the hand is the culture from the beginning in the Bible. God himself says one place, you know, I raised my hand and made an oath to Abraham and I will fulfill it, right? Amen. So it is all started right there. So first one was Abraham and Abraham recognized what God has done to him. And he says, I raised my hand before the Lord and he has given me victory. You see, Amen. you remember the Lord was living closer to Sodom and Gomorrah. And then the group of uh, kings came along and just took everything yeah. and including Lot and the family and everything. Yeah. And so Abraham heard about it and he was going after him. But before that, Abraham made an oath to God. God, if you give me, you know, because I'm raising my hands to you and you have to give me victory because I am not doing it on my own. I am doing it on behalf of you. Without your help, I cannot do it. Because there were so many kings yes. have done and taken over everything. Turn with me in your Bible. And we have that in the Bible, in the book of Genesis. Genesis. Mm -hmm. Genesis. Genesis. 
chapter 14. Genesis chapter 14. Let me read from verse 22 onwards. It says, verse 22, Genesis 14, 22. But Abraham said to the king of Sodom, I have raised my hand to the Lord God Most High. Say it with me. I have raised my hand to the Lord God Most High. And it says, Creator of the heaven and earth, and I have taken an oath and that I will accept nothing belonging to you, not even a thread or a thorn or a sandal, so that you will never be able to say, I made Abraham rich. I will accept nothing but what my men have eaten and the share that belongs to the men who went with me to Aner, Eshkol, Mambre. Let them have their share. So here's the first time that you, you see that Abraham saying that I have raised my hand to the Lord for help. So one way when you raise your hand, you are raising your hand to get help from the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. How many of you sometimes in your life needed help? <laughs> you know, sometimes we think, you know, I am an independent man or independent woman. I can do what I can do, you know, all that. But the thing is that in our life, we come to situations that we need help from the Lord. Man's help cannot do it, right? At times, man cannot help. Think about it. And so I remember my mother when she was, you know, um, I was, I think, six or seven years old. I was just about to die. I swallowed something and I was just, you know, dying. And I was in the bed in the hospital. And my mother, you know, just knelt beside my bed and she raised her hand before the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. It is not the doctor she believed in. It is not anybody else Amen. at that moment can help. Amen. And that is why I'm standing before you, because I saw, as I was dying, I know that my, what my mother is doing. She was kneeling beside me and raising her hand to the Lord. Tears was just flowing from her eyes. She was just raising her hand. I don't know how many hours that she was just raising her hand before the Lord, because that was a moment, because I'm the first son. She don't want the first son to die right in the hospital bed. So she called on the Lord, and God came through. Hallelujah. Yes. He came and touched me, and I am alive and well today. You know, so there are times in our life we reach out our hand for help. Here, Abraham said, now, to fight against these kings, I am not qualified. But I have a Lord, hallelujah, who have called me, and I'm going to call on his name. So he raised his hand to the Lord and said, you know what? You are going to give me way to way. Hallelujah. Amen. So there are time after time in the Bible that you see people raising their hand. This is one time that people needed help and God came through. What about in, uh, turn with me to Psalm 141. Okay. I hope you all bring your Bible, right? You have your Bible with you? Yes. Okay. I'm going to come around and see it. 141. And look at verse 1 and 2. This is a psalm of David. So David is writing in this psalm. He says, that, Oh Lord, I call unto you. Come quickly to me. Hear my voice when I call to you. May my prayer be set before you like incense. May the lifting up of my hands be like the evening sacrifice. Praise the Lord. What, what David is saying is that, you know, David, you know about David. David was a shepherd boy. God raised him to become what? The king of Israel, right? And he is writing, he says, when I needed help, I call on God. And what I do, I lift up my hands like a sacrifice. Lift up your hand. Praise the Lord. You know, sometimes we need help. Sometimes they say, Lord, all I got is this. I raise my hand to you as a sacrifice before the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. There are times that people bring goats and bulls to be offered on the altar. 
that is okay. But the better thing is what? Present yourself as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to the Lord. This is David doing it a long time ago. While he was writing this song, he says, I just lift up my hands to you, Lord, as a sacrifice before you. Let it be like a sacrifice before you. Don't be ashamed of raising your hand before the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. One of the signs of Pentecostals is what? <laughs> they don't care about raising their hand. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes you know you, you are so tight. Let the chains be gone in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It is a freedom that Christ has given us. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is what? Liberty to worship the Lord and honor the Lord. And here is just Abraham just raising his hand to get help from the Lord. And here is David just raising his hand and saying, Lord, I give this as a sacrifice of praise to you. Sacrifice of praise to you. At times you can just raise your hand and just give sacrifice to the Lord. Lord, I don't have nothing. Everything that I have is yours. And so I just lift my hand to you as a sign of surrender and submission to you. And Lord, I need you to be praised in my life. Sacrifice. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to go a little further. I'm going to take deeper and deeper, okay? Is it okay? Yeah. Okay. All right, turn to 143, Psalm 143. Look at verse 5 and 6. It says, I remember the days of long ago. I meditate on all your works and consider what you have, your hands have done. And I spread out my hand to you. My soul thirsts for you like a parched land. Here is also David crying out to God. And he, in verse 5, he is beginning to think about, pondering about the goodness of the Lord in his life. He could have said, you know, I was nobody, but God touched me and anointed me and made me to somebody. Hallelujah. It is God who has done all this. So in verse 5, he says, I remember the days of long ago, and I meditate on all your works. The wonderful works of God all through the history of Israel is just amazing. God did miracle after miracle after miracle to just provide for the children, to protect the children, to get them out of slavery. So many things God had done for them. And David knew all that. And he looked to God and said, Lord, I just raised my hand. I lift up my hands to you. Because when I remember the good things that you have done, and I'm just, you know, awe oh, about you, who you are. And I remember the good things. And see, he says in verse 6, he said, in verse 6, I spread out my hands to you. My soul thirsts for you like a parched land. This is, this is David is just longing for God's presence in his life. Praise the Lord. Thirsting for God. As the deer pants for the waters, so my soul longs for you. That is what David wrote. And so he is writing again and again. So anytime you read the Psalms of David, you can feel his heart, right? The, the heart of David is this. He wants God to be shown up. You know, wherever when he is just lifting his hands, Lord, I'm so thirsty for you. I'm so thirsty for your presence, Lord. Like a dry land, you know? I have seen sometimes in the videos, you know, when there's a dry land and suddenly the rain begins to pour, right? Have you seen that, you know? It's all broken, you know, cracked everywhere, and then begin to they begin to rain and and it rain for some time, but the water you won't see it. Why? It just sucks it up, right? It's just so dry, it just gobbles up all the all the water that can. That is how David says that I'm so thirsty. For you, Lord. Sometimes you can raise your hand to say to the Lord, Lord, I want your presence. I want to feel your presence, Lord. Praise the Lord. You can all you can do all the other things. It is all just rules and regulations. But when it comes to you and God, you need to have a hunger and thirst for God and for his presence. How do you do it? David says, I just raise my hands to you. He's not bashful to do it, right? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. You know, when you see, when you meet people, when you see Christians, you say what? 
Hallelujah, praise the Lord, right? <laughs> Don't be bashful because we are living in an age where God's name is going to be pushed down and the word of God is pushed down and the Christianity is pushed down. Everybody in the world is just trying to do that. But we have to wake up. Hallelujah. Yes. Wake up in the name of the Lord and say, yes. be bold and be strong and say, God, we need your presence. Amen. And I say, Lord, I praise yes. you and yes. honor you. And I want to thank you. You are my help. Every situation that Amen. the people of God is just raising their hands up. <coughs> Don't be bashful. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Let's go further. Are you ready? Oh, yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. The people of Israel were in a great big turmoil. You know, and Nebuchadnezzar came and destroyed the temple that their Solomon has built. And they have destroyed the walls of Jerusalem. You look at the city now, it's all burnt down. Everything is just burned. The walls are broken down. The temple is just broken down, burned. And that's what Nebuchadnezzar did. And then he took all the speed, most of the people as slaves. And, and here, after several years, God is bringing people back to rebuild. And Amen. Ezra came with the group and rebuilt the temple of God. And then Nehemiah came and he started rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem. And now after looking at this new building that they've been building and all these people were gathering together. And what did they do? The Bible says Ezra and Nehemiah, they were just leading people in worshiping the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, there were bad times, but God has restored. Amen. Because God is restoring and they are willing to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, you've been through some times and it was harsh. And you, you say, no, did God forget about me? No. And now he has come through again. He restored you. Hallelujah. Amen. Yesterday we were having a very good time. Brother Charlie took me. You know, we both went to uh, this car show. What do you call it? Uh, Auto Rama. Yes. <laughs> oh man, I thought, wow, this is just amazing. I, I took my camera, I was just keep on clipping it, everything. Woo! It don't cost me anything, right? I was just taking picture after picture. I was like a, like a kid in a candy store, right? I don't, I don't know which one to do what, you know? It was just amazing to look at all these awesome automobiles that people have spent time to just make it look really, really nice, right? Beautiful colors. And my son Samson, you know, likes cars. And I took all these pictures and I'm going to send it to him. So look what we've got in Fortuna. Hallelujah. All these nice cars everywhere, they come to Fortuna to show us how wonderful that is, right? So what I see here is that all these people just doing their best and everybody is just having a good time. And I think, Lord, how amazing you are. This is just right. human beings created, but you have done marvelous things Amen. that man cannot even fathom and understand Amen. how awesome God is. Hallelujah. Yes. Lift up your hand and praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Mm. Turn with me to Ezra. Ezra, the book of Ezra. What did Ezra do? Do you know where is Ezra? Next okay, First Chronicles, Second Chronicles. Then what? Ezra. Ezra chapter 9. Look at verse 5. Ezra is praying, okay? He's praying to the Lord. In verse 5 it says, Then at the evening sacrifice, I rose from my self-abasement with my tunic and clock torn and fell on my knees with my hands spread out to the Lord, my God, and I prayed. See, this is a very sad moment for Ezra because the people of Israel did not follow the direction of God. God said, you are not supposed to intermarry with other people. And what did they do? They did it, they did it right? Anything you say, don't do it, they, did it. they do it, just like us. Exactly. How many of you can identify yourself with the Israelites, right? Yeah. Well, God called them stiff-necked people. How about you? Yeah. Right? And God said, don't do it, and you what? Yeah. 
My grandson, yesterday we were seeing this, you know, we FaceTime all the time, right? To see. And uh, there's a light and there's a knob there. And he goes and he puts it on. And mom and dad sits there and say, no, put it off. He says, what? <laughs> I'm not going to do it. <laughs> right? But he said, don't do it. Even if you are a one year, two year old, it doesn't matter. They want to do it. Yeah. That is what human beings are. We try to do it. And so here is Ezra looking at people. They have intermarried and they have just, you know, brought all these People that don't belong here, they have learned their language, they have learned their culture, and so it is like a contaminated water, you know? It's not a pure water. And so Ezra was so sad for what they have done before the Lord. And so what did he do? He's just crying out. He just tore his tunic, and he knelt before the Lord. And everybody is watching. He is just raising his hand. I believe that Ezra is just crying and weeping before the Lord for the sins that people have committed in their life. He was raising his hands for the mercy of God. Hallelujah. At times you raise your hand for the help. At times you God call on God when you are in trouble. At times you thank the Lord for who he is. But at times that you just bow before the Lord and Amen. be sad and cry for the wickedness. Sometimes we have to check ourselves, right? Yeah. Very often we have to do that. Because sin can easily just keep creeping. Yeah. Right? Like as we plant good seeds, Satan also comes in what? Plants bad seed. So you have to keep on taking that wild thing that is growing in you. Praise the Lord. You have to make sure that it is out. And so at times you have to sit at the presence of the Lord and longing for his presence and ask him to just cleanse you. I do a makeover from top to bottom, all the way, right? Yeah. Cleanse me, Lord. Yeah. Then we cry out to the Lord in Psalm 51 and says, Lord, wash me, create in me a clean heart, O oh God. Amen. And so Nehemiah, what did he do? Uh, Ezra, Ezra was crying out to the Lord, raising his hands, fell on his knees with my hands spread out to the Lord. And he started praying. He says in verse 6, and prayed, Oh my God, I am too ashamed and disgraced to lift my face to you. My God, because of our sins are higher than our heads and our guilt has reached to the heaven. He was just so sad about the condition of the people of Israel. But the promise of God came through. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They were punished. They were taken out of the land. But God brought them back. And he is now trying to restore. Restoration and cleansing. It just works together. Hallelujah. Amen. You cleanse and you restore. I was talking about the cars, about restoration. These cars were not like that when these guys bought it, right? Their body just broken down, nasty looking and all that. But they know it is so valuable. So what did they do? They take it to their shop and, and they just clean it up really good. And if it's really something is bad, damaged, and they take it out and put the same kind of pot in it and just wipe it clean and nice and, you know, spray it real good. And when you watch that, you say, whoa, right? How did it happen? Because it's been restored. Amen. Amen. Restoration. Hallelujah. Amen. Restoration is very important in all of our life. We have to allow and we have to go into the altar of God all the time and allow the Spirit of God to work in us. He, his words cleanse us. The Spirit of God is able to bring that fire in us and burn unwanted things and, and He is able to restore us to the brand new situation. Hallelujah. Oh, Bible yeah. says if anyone is in Christ, he is a new, new creation. The old things are passed away. Behold, everything yes. becomes new. Yes. A restoration yes. that happens when you just yes. wait on God and call on God yes. in His name. Not only in Ezra, but in also Nehemiah. Turn with me to Nehemiah chapter 8. Nehemiah chapter 8. And look at verse... Four onwards, it says, Ezra the scribe stood on a high wooden platform built for the occasion. Beside him on his right stood Matitaya, Shema, Anaya, Uriah, 
Hilkiah, and Maseh. And on his left were Pediah, Mishael, Malkijah, and Hashum, Hasbanadah, and Zechariah, and uh, Meshulam. All these guys with difficult names. <laughs> like my name, right? <laughs> difficult name. And look at verse 5, it says, Ezra opened the book. All the people could see him because he was standing above them. And as he opened it, the people all stood up. And Ezra praised the Lord, the great God. And all the people, what did they do? They lifted their hands. Can you believe that, right? Right here it says, all the people, all the people of Israel, they know what it means to raise their hand to the Lord. And so Ezra cried out for God's forgiveness. And now Ezra is standing and raising his hand, about to read the word of God. Everybody stood up. Child, old man, everybody together stood up. And as he was beginning to read, everybody raised their hands towards heaven. What a wonderful Hallelujah. sight that must be. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Raise the hands towards together in the honor of the Lord. Amen. Honoring the Lord. Praising the Lord for who he is. He was about to read the word. And everybody together raised their hand. Now what happened here? Look at here. It says, Ezra... Praise the Lord. Verse 6 says, The great God and all the people lifted their hands and responded, Amen, Amen. And what did they do? Then they bowed down and worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. You can worship the Lord raising your hand. Don't be bashful. Those days are gone. Praise the Lord. Amen. We got to double up our faith. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. You have to stand up for your faith. Put on the whole armor of God. Take the, take the sword of the spirit and yes. your shield and what? Then you stand your ground. You have to do what you have to do. You know, our battle is not with flesh and blood. We have to fight the principalities and power. How do we do it? We are not matched to it, but we have to just stand our ground and allow God to fight the battle. Hallelujah. The battle belongs to the Lord. Hallelujah. But He asked us to pray in the Spirit. Raise your hand and pray in the Spirit. If you have already received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you know, you have the right to raise your hand and bless the Lord because He alone is worthy. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He alone is worthy. Worship Him and honor Him and praise Him because He alone is worthy. Mm -hmm. yes. Here is people just blessing the Lord. Now there are times that you have to fight the battle by raising your hand. I'll take you one more incident in the Bible. In the time when Moses took all the people of Israel from bondage, Moses and Aaron, brought them into the desert. They crossed over the Red Sea. And God began to provide for them manna every day, day after day. God's presence was there with them. And you see that the people of God is now trained to learn how to worship God. And God began to just teach a lot of things to them, right? So one of the things was that if you want to win your battle, you have to raise your hand to the Lord. Amen. Why? Amalekites were the first enemies to came and attack the people of Israel. You all look like you don't believe me. <laughs> Pastor is just dreaming. No, turn with me in your Bible to Exodus chapter 17. Turn with me to Exodus chapter 17. It's very interesting. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Right there is a beautiful information for us. Let me read a few verses here. Verse 8. Exodus chapter 17 verse 8. Are you all there? Yeah. Praise the Lord. Let me read it. It says, The Amalekites came and attacked the Israelites at Rapidim. Moses said to Joshua, Choose some of our men and go out to fight the Amalekites. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the staff of God in my hands. So Joshua fought the Amalekites as Moses has ordered. And Moses and Aaron and her went to the top of the hill. Now you have to understand, these guys are old. When Moses was called by God, he was what? Already 80 years old. 
Because when, when he was 40 years old, he left Egypt after killing a guy, right? He ran for his life, and he went and settled down in Midianite's area. And then he was there for 40 years. What was he doing? He grew up in palace, but now he is tending the sheep for 40 years. Yes. And that is where he met God, and God called him for his ministry. And then when he was 80, he led the people out of the bondage, right? And then now he is 80 plus years. Now he is just climbing on the mountain. Do you know Aaron and her are going with him? There's three people going to the top of the mountain, climbing up to the top of the mountain. As the battle is going on in the valley, these guys were just climbing up to the top of that. If Aaron, if Moses is 80 plus years, how old is Aaron? Aaron is older than me. How many of you think Aaron is older than him? No. Aaron is younger than him? How many of you think like that? Oh, Aaron is brother? Oh, I need to just restart everything. <laughs> All right. Aaron was older, okay? He was three years older than Moses. So if Moses was 80 plus years, then Aaron must be what? 83 plus years. Now, her, and so three people are climbing up the top of the mountain. They have one purpose. They have one purpose only. They are not going to fight the battle because they have already sent Joshua and the rest of the men into the valley to fight the battle against Amalekites. The Amalekites came and first attacked the Israelites. Now this group of people with Joshua, they are going to fight the battle. But the battle cannot be won because they are not trained soldiers yet. Praise the Lord. They just came out of this bondage as the slaves. And so here is this Moses climbing up with Aaron and her. And he had a staff in his hand. And he is raising up to the Lord. Praise the Lord. Can you imagine this old man standing up and raising his hands up with a staff in his hand. Let's read that. It is just amazing to see what God can do when you mean business. Look at verse 11. It says, As long as Moses held up his hands, the Israelites were winning. But whenever he lowered his hands, because he was 80 plus years old, right? You know, you're a human being. Moses himself is just a human being. And he can just do so far. He was just raising his hand with a staff in his hand. And whenever he just got tired and lowered his hand, the Bible says the Amalekites were winning. So when verse 12, it says, when Moses' hands grew tired, they took a stone and put it under him. And he sat on it. Aaron and Hur held his hands up, Amen. one on one side, one on the other so that his hands remain steady till sunset. You talk about consistency and tenacity. Yeah. It's Moses and Aaron and her. See, if Moses was gone up there by himself, he could have got tired and everything could have been what? Lost. But he know the battle cannot be fought by himself alone. He needs some friends. Jesus himself had to have few people to pray for him. Do you know in the last moment Jesus went to the garden of Gethsemane. He took all the disciples and left some of them. And he said three people, Peter, James and John, you come with me. So they went a little further and he set them right there and said, Peter, James and John, sit here. And you pray for me. My heart is so burdened. And I'm, I'm, you know, so please pray for me. And he set them there. And they were just sitting there. And I think they prayed for 10 minutes or so. <laughs> right? And Jesus went up by himself somewhere in a stone throw distance. And he knelt before God. I believe he was just crying before the Father because he knew what is going to happen to him that night. Jesus himself needed some people to pray for him. Pray for me. How important it is to understand that we need each other. Praise the Lord. Amen. We are all in the same boat. I have to remind you again and again. 
I am not growing the boat myself. <laughs> You're all in the boat with me. Praise the Lord. Amen. If you make a hole in the boat, we are all going to sink. Praise the Lord. Right. So don't try to do that. That is not wise, right? Amen. That is not just, you know, you have to understand that. You have to make sure that we are all together with one mind and one heart so that we will be able to do the things that belongs to God. We can win the battle. Hallelujah. Amen. Even though the battle belongs to the Lord, but He called us to be together. In one mind and one heart. You know, on the day of Pentecost, when all these people, they were praying for 10 days. Yes. Because after the resurrection, Jesus was showing up himself for 40 days, right? Mm -hmm. And after 40 days, Jesus just was ascended into heaven. And then what did he say? Don't leave this place. Just stay in Jerusalem until you receive the promise that God has promised. And so what did they do? From day 40 all the way to day 50. How many days? Ten, Ten days. All these people were staying in that upper room. And they stayed together. All they were doing it for, Bible says, they were constantly in prayer. That's what Bible says, book of Acts. It says they were constantly in prayer. Mm -hmm. What were they doing? They were just crying. Now, they do not know what is going to happen. They have no idea. You know, they, they know that God likes surprises, right? <laughs> He's going to do some surprise for them, but they do not know what is to expect. And they were just praying and praying. I believe all of them were kneeling in that upper room and crying out to God, not knowing what is going to happen. For 10 days, they were constantly in prayer. Hmm. How important it is for us. If you want to win the battles in your life, don't take it lightly. Praise the Lord. Amen. You have to be in the spirit and allowing the whole body to be dominated by the spirit of God so that we will be praying in the spirit. Because sometimes we do not know how to pray and what to pray. But the spirit of God knows the mind of God. Hallelujah. Amen. And because he knows the mind of God, he knows how to pray according to the will of the Father. That is why the Bible says you have to pray in the spirit. And so they were praying and they were just praying. They did not know what to expect. And the Bible says the spirit of God fell upon them. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, I believe that all these people, they were Jewish guys. They were all together, and they begin to experience the wonderful outpouring of the Amen. Holy Spirit of God the first time. It is for everybody. The prophet Joel prophesied in the last days, I'm going hallelujah. to pour out my spirit upon oh, all glory. flesh. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. My sons and my daughters, they will prophesy. And there was prophecy going on. You know, they were just pre you know, they were just speaking in tongues. They have no idea what's going on because the spirit of God took over. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. If you want to win your battles, fight the battles on your knees. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Fight the battle with the help of the Holy Spirit of God. Amen. Because the Bible says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Woo, hallelujah. Yes. I yes. feel like jumping all over everywhere, <laughs> I'm telling you. That is what the Bible says. The authority he has given us is this. Go into all the world. All authority has been given unto me. So we have the great authority. We have the great power. We have to make use of it on our knees. Pray Amen. for the missionaries. Pray for your lost ones in your own family. Pray for the neighborhood. Hallelujah. Where yes. you live. Pray Amen. for your neighbor. Pray Amen. for this community that yes. God has put yes. you in. Pray for this town. Pray for this nation. Hallelujah. Yes. Pray for your president. Pray for your cabinet members. Pray for your Congress. Hallelujah. We need to pray. If my people who are called by my name Hallelujah. will humble themselves Praise and cry out to heaven and Hallelujah. turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and heal the land. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is it possible for God Glory. to do a miracle again in this nation? Yes. He can do it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You and I have to yeah. take the responsibility on our shoulders yes. and raise our hand yes. to the Lord. Hallelujah. Crying out to the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. Don't lose your fire, church. Don't lose your fire. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. When Paul says to Timothy, he says, I see the fire in you, yes. but it is not burning real nice. So I want you to what? Find the flame. <laughs> Into flame. Hallelujah. 
I wish we have a fan that I can come and fan all of you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have to allow ourselves under the anointing and the presence of the Holy Spirit of God. Praise the Lord to win the battle. And right here, Moses was 80 plus years old. Aaron was 83 plus years old. They both together with her, they were lifting him up. If somebody is tired of fighting the battle, you yes. have to come along help and them. help them. Praise the Lord. Yes. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. We are all together. If I am weak, then you come to help me. If I find you weak, I come to help you. We have to help each other, build each other up according to the word of God. And so here is an example that we can learn that as long as the hands were lifted up, Israelites were winning. Hallelujah. How many of you like winning? Yeah. yeah. See, I like to play chess <laughs> by myself, with myself, you know, on the computer. <laughs> Because I don't want to lose to anybody, right? Oh so that's why I learn all these tricks in the computer. And I go and just play this chess, you know. I move, I move, and I see what the computer is doing. I learn from it. Next time when I move this and I know what the move the computer is going to do, right? I like to win. So if there are levels from one level, two level, third level, you know, you can just keep improving yourself and just win the battle with the, you know, computer. And then I went to India. You know, my sister's son is a young man, right? He said, Uncle, would you like to play chess with me? He, oh. he had no idea I play chess too, right? <laughs> he thought he can just beat me up, you know? <laughs> I said, okay, I think I play a little. <laughs> I said, okay. So uh, he said that, you know, chess game right there, and he was sitting there, and I, I could see everything that he was trying to do. But I was just messing him up. <laughs> just lost right yeah. the first one he said okay we'll play one more time <laughs> and then he tried his best with all the tricks that he knew and I was just messing him up really bad the second time and I said would you like to play the third time he said no <laughs> praise the Lord resist the devil yeah. win the battle one after the other he will run, hallelujah. Amen. Not with your name, but the name of Jesus, Jesus. the powerful Son of God. Amen. Stand under the blood of Jesus, yes. under the banner of the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Yes. And the devil knows he cannot mess with Jesus. That's right. Amen. All power, Jesus said, has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. The Father gave him the name that is higher Amen. than any other name. Amen. Buddha, a lot of people believe in Buddha. A lot of people believe in Krishna. A lot of people believe in Confucianism. A lot of people believe in all these philosophies. But there is one name that is Hallelujah. higher than all the yeah, other names. names. Hallelujah. Yes. And in the name of Jesus. Jesus. The Bible says, every yes. knee shall bow and, and every tongue, tongue will confess, confess that Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. He's the King of Kings. He's the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. Yes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise glory, glory, glory. Look at what happened here. So verse 12 says, when Moses' hands grew tired, they took a stone and put it under him and he sat on it. Aaron and her held his hands up on one side, one on one side, one on the other, so that his hands <coughs> remained steady till sunset. Right? Amen. I'm 60 years old when I walk, you know, I like walking. <laughs> you know, you walk, and then all this blood comes and just fills this hand. My hands become heavy. How many of you had that problem? Do you understand what I'm saying? You walk for some time, and all the blood comes and just makes your hand heavy. And I cannot even remove my ring from my finger. <laughs> just plumped up. So what I do, the best thing is to do what? Yeah. Raise your hand and walk. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> so Moses was just raising his hand as long as his hands were lifted up. And the battle was, you know, just they were winning right there in the valley. Joshua was just... You know, winning the battle with the Amalekites. Mm -hmm. 
till the evening, till the sunset, they make sure that Moses' hands were steady all the way up. Look at verse 13. It says, So Joshua overcame the Amalekites' army with a sword. Then the Lord said to Moses, Write this on a scroll as something to be remembered. Mm. Woo, hallelujah. Yes. When God says that, you got to do it, right? Yes. He says, whenever you win a battle in your life with the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit of God, you have to make sure you write it down and keep it for your remembrance. Hallelujah. Sometimes you tend to forget what God has done in your life. How many battles that he has given you to win in your life. Because he is the victorious king. Hallelujah. Amen. And so he said people may tend to forget it. So make sure that you write it down. Write this on a scroll as something to be remembered. And make sure that Joshua hears it. Why? Mm. Because Joshua had no idea what was going on on the mountaintop. Mm. Do you know that? Maybe Joshua is thinking what? I am a good warrior. <laughs> Maybe Joshua think my sword is strong and I'm fighting the battle with the Amalekites. I'm just winning the battle. And Joshua thought he was doing it. And the truth is what? God. On the mountain top, on the mountain top, the hands were raised to the Lord. And as long as the hands were lifted up and Joshua winning the battle. And so God said, make sure you write it down and let Joshua know about it. You got to tell your children. Mm. When you, when God gives you some victory in your life, you have to tell your children Amen. so that they will know that next generation are lost today because we just slacked as parents sometimes. We just don't want to do too much. You know, we just wanted to take it easy. If you take it easy, the whole generation is lost. Mm. To bring one Amen. generation back into the Lord, it is too hard. Do you know that? Today's Christianity is changing. The culture is changing. Christianity is changing. But the word of God will not change. We don't compromise. Amen. We don't just, you know, we just stand the ground. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. According to the word of God. So yes. tell Joshua. Make sure Joshua knows about it. He said, Joshua hears it because I will completely blot out the memory of Amalekite from under heaven. Verse 15 says, So Moses built an altar and called it, The Lord is my banner. Say it with me. The, the Lord, Lord is, is my banner. banner. Say it with me once again. The, the Lord, Lord is my banner. banner. He said, my, For my hands were lifted up to the throne of God. Yes, hallelujah. Ooh, hallelujah. Don't fight the battle with your energy, with your strength. Mm -hmm. Don't do it. That is not the way to fight. Praise the Lord. Praise you the Lord. and I are not a good match. <laughs> right? right? But we know the Spirit of God is. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So you have to allow the Spirit of God to dominate your life, your mind, or your whole being. And let him fight the battle. That is why praying in the spirit is very, very essential as a Christian. As you grow and mature, you know, you have to learn to understand the importance of praying in the spirit in day-to-day -day life. The battle belongs to the Lord. Amen. And he proved it again that as long as Moses was crying out to God, and they were winning the battle. And so Moses called it, the Lord is my banner. Jehovah Nisi. And it says, The Lord will be at war against the Amalekites from generation to generation. generation. Not just one generation. <clears throat> About Amalekites and Philistines and all these ites, they fight, they come and fight you, and they lose and they grunt. And then they rearrange themselves <laughs> and then practice some more. And then they come and fight again, right? <laughs> That's what they do. Amalekites, Philistines, that's what they do. They come again and again and again. They keep on fighting and they go back. And when they lose, they go back. And then they again, they come back and fight. Amen. That's what the devil does. Yes. Yeah. Right? Yeah. When you kick him one time, he's not going to be gone forever. Right? No. You say what? 
said, okay, maybe I'll come and kick him in the side. Yeah. <laughs> or I'll come and kick him on this side. <laughs> no. Mm -hmm. If you put on the whole armor of God. Fully covered. Praise the Lord. Amen. Whole armor of God and stand your ground. Allow the spirit of God. Generation after generation. It says that God is going to fight the war, battle with the people of Amalekites. The Amalekites for generation to generation if you there are times that you have to fight the battle the generation before us fought their battle do you know that you remember your grandma grandpa they have been in the church and crying out to the Lord crying and weeping for your salvation oh, yeah. and that generation has done their job and they passed by right your grandpa generation and then your father and mothers they have done their job and they passed by. I don't have my dad, I don't have my mom. I know my mother was a prayer warrior, right? And she did what she can and she is gone. And now it is up to me, this right. generation. Hallelujah, right. I have to make sure I fight the battle. Hallelujah, and I hold on to my wife. Hold my hands, Ruby. I hold on my hands, you know, with her and pray with her. Hallelujah. Every day, every day together, uniting your mind and heart together and cry out to the Lord. That is how you win the battle in this generation. Amen. Because the generation, the next generation is going to fight their battle. Amen. Prepare them right now. Hallelujah. Yes. Prepare them yes. to understand. You know, all authority has been given to the church. Right. Said, so go into all the world and preach the gospel. Drive up demons, raise people from dead, heal every sickness. All these things were given to the church today from generation to generation. We cannot let the next generation go without catching the fire of God. Hallelujah. Do you understand what I'm talking about? You have to be an example in your talk, in your walk, in your behavior to the next generation. Don't ever think, you know, take it for granted. The children, they think they're not watching me. I can be mean to them. <laughs> no. They watch you. Yes. Praise yes. the Lord. Mm -hmm. They watch you. Every move that you make. <clears throat> they bought a small little guitar for my grandson. Because Big Daddy, he has so many guitars hanging on his wall. <laughs> right? And he saw his dad playing guitar. So he wants to mess with, mess, mess, with, mess with the big guitars. And so his dad bought a small guitar for him. So he took a video of that, sent it to us. He was just playing. They played the music and they gave the guitar to him. And he was just trying to do exactly what dad was doing. The children are watching. Behave. Praise the Lord. Amen. Be good. Love them. Yes, yes. Give them the fire that you got in their life. Don't lose the next generation church. We have a responsibility to teach them how to fight the battle. Not with flesh and blood but with the power and the anointing of the Spirit of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. I'm sweating and I'm done. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, oh, you. <laughs> raise your hands. Yes. Everybody, raise your yes. hands. Thank you, Jesus. Because this is, this is not to be ashamed of. Because this is biblical. <laughs> Abraham raised his hand. Moses raised his hand. David raised his hands. All the people of Israel raised their hand. If you recognize the presence of God, if you need the presence of God in your life, if you want to win the battle in your life, all you have to do is just give yourself up into the hands of God. Submit yourself to God and say, God, I'm submitting myself completely into your hand. And the battle belongs to you. All I do is allow the Spirit of God to pray in and through me. Hallelujah. 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 I do not know what kind of a battle that you are fighting in your life. Maybe you are praying for your grandson or granddaughter. Maybe you are financially, you are trying, you know, to survive. Maybe you have lost a job and you are trying to survive, but you do not know. Maybe you are fighting a battle with sickness. I have no idea. But God is powerful. Hallelujah. You can cry out to the Lord. This morning, the altar is open. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Get up from your seat and come to the altar, everybody. Amen. Yes, hallelujah. Come and kneel.